Members, as you remember, as we began this 100th legislature on the opening day, we had invited all of the, of the living former speakers of the House to join us here on the House floor. Eight of the 11 living former speakers of the House were able to join us that day, and as you remember, they signed a tribute that commemorated the beginning of the 100th legislature. I thought, and as did you, that it was important to give honor to whom honor is due and to thank those who had come before us for their service to this institution that we now have the opportunity and blessing to serve in. We are now joined today by former Speaker of the House Paul Hilligans on the floor, but to speak to Speaker Hilligans and give an introduction, the chair recognizes Representative Hertel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the opportunity to say a few words about shared power and what it meant to this institution and to this state. I want to thank Speaker Hilligans for being here with us today, uh, and uh, my brother Curtis Hertel graced us with his presence from the Senate. He did ask me to be brief, because apparently he has something else to get to. Uh, you know, one of my favorite things about serving in this chamber are the many stories that I get to hear from staff, interns, members that served and worked with my father while he was here. And a lot of those stories surround the time of shared power and the work he did with Speaker Hilligans during that time. Now, uh, I think it's important for a little bit of background. I was only eight years old at the time of shared power. My friend from the 11th district in Inkster wasn't even born yet. So let's provide a little background on how we got to where we were. In the 1992 election, as we approached, uh, Democrats had controlled this chamber for 24 years. And we saw a vast change after that election took place. Uh, there was a speaker, the current speaker, that lost his election. There uh, was an, a recount. Republicans thought they had taken majority. And a recount in the city of Warren flipped the seat and uh, ultimately gave a 55-55 split to this chamber. And that was the first time that occurred in the history of this house. And I think to be clear, and I, I think Speaker Hilligans would agree, both sides did their best to try to find that 56 vote in order to control this chamber. I think Democrats even tried to uh, make a late lame duck change to the rules to try to hold power. And it wasn't until the budget director at the time threatened to cut all funding to the House of Representatives that the two leaders realized they had to come together and work towards an end that was best for the people of the state of Michigan. And I'll tell you, in a time of partisan politics that we have today, it's hard to imagine two leaders coming together like that, but that is the work that we all have to do. And I think when we look at the work that my father and Speaker Hilligans did, it was a testament to their love of this institution. It was a testament to the work that they did here, and they understood that at the end of the day, while we have disagreements, we must all work for the betterment of this state. So I say uh, all of that, uh, and I thank Speaker Hilligans for his leadership and the service uh, with my father. You know, this is a tough subject to talk about, and last night I spent time talking with one of my father's closest friends uh, that he served in this chamber with. And I asked, what do you think was the biggest attribute of those two leaders to be able to get that done, get an agreement done. We have to, no, we have to remember there was nothing in the House rules that required a shared power agreement. It was only those two leaders that put it together, and everybody said that it would fail when they put it together. Every pundit said this won't last days, this won't last weeks. Well, the session of 1993 and 1994 was one of the most productive sessions in this state's history. So my father's friend told me that uh, you know, the best attribute that he saw during that time was that they were leaders who knew how to listen to people. When you talked to them, you knew you were being heard. And you might disagree, and often they did, but they knew that each viewpoint was being seen and looked at, and ultimately compromise was being looked for. And that's something that I think we can learn from the time of shared power in this chamber today that we can all work together, we can all find compromise. So Speaker Hilligans, I wish that my father was standing here with us today. But I know that he uh, greatly respected the relationship 
that you had. And he talked often about the work that you accomplished. And if I can get a small portion of that done during my time here in the house, I feel that my father's legacy will be carried on. So thank you so much for being here today, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Representative. And before I ask Speaker Hilligans to join me on the rostrum to sign this tribute, colleagues, though unfortunately former Speaker Curtis Hertel cannot join us today, I would like to ask Representative Kevin Hertel and Senator Curtis Hertel to please rise and colleagues join me in thanking them for the service of the Hertel family to the Michigan House of Representatives.